okay? Um, all right, on Monday we did an activity that had to do with this idea of a basketball, okay? Um, and we wanted to try and see if the basketball would go into the hoop, right? And we had to approximate this based off of the graph of a quadratic. So ladies and gentlemen, at the very top where it says parent functions for quadratics, um, it gives us a blank and it says blank is the most basic form of a quadratic. So let me zoom in here. Um, the most basic form, ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and real quick, A, B, and C, what do you think they are? Numbers. They're numbers, they're coefficients. Okay, A, B, C are all numbers. Okay, now the most common quadratic ever, like literally the one that we go to all the time, it's our blueprint for a quadratic, is the function f of x equals x squared. Okay, that right there is the most common quadratic. It's what we call our parent function. That's where we start. And then we do a bunch of transformations to make our quadratics, those U's, to make them either bigger, smaller, wider, flip them upside down, move them left, move them right. That's our go-to. That's where we start each and every time. Okay, so let me go ahead and explain the graph. Whoa, hey. Let me explain the graph of this quadratic that's here. Okay, so notice we have our quadratic. It's going... It's making like a big smiley face. Here's a way to think about it. Big smiley face. Okay. Wherever it crosses the x-axis, right there, right there, we call them zeros. Okay. They are also solutions to the quadratic. So if I were to say, hey, what is the solution? All you would have to do is graph it in the calculator and tell me where it crosses the x-axis. Those are solutions. Okay, pretty easy. Because you can do it, the entire thing in your calculator. Okay, if I ask you where the x-intercepts are, they're the same place. Okay, because solutions, zeros, x-intercepts, and things that we call roots, they're all the same thing. It's where it crosses the x-axis. Yes, ma'am? Is the quadratic, is it always in symmetrical? Always. Okay. Our quadratics, that's actually a really good question. It's always going to be symmetrical because we have this thing called the axis of symmetry. Okay. So whatever happens on one side of our graph has to happen on the other. And the axis of symmetry always goes straight down the middle through the point called the vertex. Okay, now sometimes, depending on the quadratic, your vertex can either be at the bottom of your graph, and we call that a minimum. Okay, that is our lowest value, our minimum value. Okay, but other times our vertex can be at the top, and we call that our maximum value. Okay, and that kind of makes sense, right? So minimums are at the bottom of the valley, the lowest possible value we can have, and our maximums are at the top. They're the highest value we can have. Okay, so if someone maxes out doing squats or something, it is the highest value that they've ever gotten. Okay? Now the axis of symmetry does have an equation. Okay? The equation is x equals. So if I know the vertex point, whatever x is, that's the axis of symmetry. 
Okay, so they work together. Yes, ma'am. Are you allowed to make a point there to just clarify, like, that's where it is at? Well, axis of symmetry is down at the very bottom. Oh, so the this The line, line is x equals. So it's oh, a completely okay. vertical line that goes through the vertex. Okay. Okay? Vertical, vertex. See? See? Okay. Questions about explaining this graph? Yes? So the z, r, x, s thing is zeros. zeros and the x squared. So z, r, x, s, this thing right here, z, r, x, s, I wish the green was darker, but that represents zeros, roots, x, intercepts, and solutions. So it doesn't equal to f of x equals x squared. This graph right here does not equal x squared. Is this graph right here, this one that we just broke apart and did all the pieces to, that's like x squared minus 4 with a couple other things involved. Okay, so there, that's a transformation. Zero, everything in this box right there. Okay. Zeros, roots, x, intercept, solutions. I just didn't want to write it twice. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't really done domain a lot since first semester, okay? But the domain of a quadratic function, 99, 99 out of 100 times is gonna be from negative infinity to positive infinity almost every time, okay? Um, so your domain, negative to positive all real numbers. Okay. So domain, pretty easy. All real numbers. Inf negative infinity, positive infinity, done. Okay. The range is a little bit different. Okay. If we have a minimum. Okay. So if we have our vertex is at the bottom of the u, okay? Then our range is y has to be greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex, okay? So we're looking at the minimum going up, okay? If we have a maximum, so like if our graph looks like this and there's a maximum point, then y is less than the x or the y value of the vertex. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I've already graphed this first example for you. Okay, plugged it in, graphed it for you, looks like this. Well, minus that random black line that's chilling there. Okay. So that right there, bless you, that right there is the graph of x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay? Our job is to label the vertex or identify the vertex. Now, the vertex is going to be either at the very, very bottom, the lowest point, or it's going to be at the very, very top our highest point, our minimum and maximum. What do we have here? Lowest point. Lowest point, also known as the? Mm -hmm. Minimum. Where is it? It's at negative four. Oh. Negative, uh, one, negative four. One, negative four. Remember, x's come first. So our vertex is at one, negative four. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I said, what is the maximum, what do we have, a maximum or a minimum? We have a minimum. What is it? Negative. No. Y'all, look what I do. Watch what I do. One, negative four. That's my minimum point. What did I just do? Y'all, it's the same thing. Our vertex and our minimum are the same things. Okay? Now, if I asked you for maximum, it'd be the same thing. Because sometimes we don't ask for the vertex. Sometimes I straight up will just say, what's the minimum or maximum? Graph it, what's the min max? Okay, and you have to tell me. Okay. Axis of symmetry. 
x equals what? 1. 1. I know that the equation is always going to be x equals, and it's always going to be the x value. Negative 1, positive 3. So x equals negative 1, positive 3. Well, I, I didn't put it in parentheses, so it's not a point. Yes, sir? Like, to give the actual point? Yes. Yes. 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, he just asked if we could put it in point form. We could. Negative 1, comma, 0, that's 1. And then 3, comma, 0, that's another one. Okay? Y intersect. Zero, what does that mean? Three. It's where the line passes through the Y. Where we cross the Y axis. Yeah. Negative three. Zero, Ooh, negative 3. 0, negative 3. Because we're below. And you don't put y equals? No. Oh, oh. I just got it. Now, I know it's not on here, but let's go ahead and add. What's the domain? Um, negative infinity 2. Uh, X positive. Positive infinity, all real numbers. How do I know? Ladies and gentlemen, check that out. Those arrows mean we're going on and on and on to infinity and beyond. Okay? So domain, there are two ways we can write it. We can say negative infinity, sorry, negative infinity is less than or equal to x, which is... Wait, wasn't it greater than x? Yeah. Yep. They're going to be the same. All right, ladies and gentlemen, range. Okay, using what I have on this page for a minimum. First, you guys told me we have a minimum in this graph. That's what you told me. So I know that my range is going to have to be y is greater than, oops, sorry, greater than or equal to the y value of the vertex. What's our y value of the vertex? Negative four. Negative four. <laughs> okay. Questions, comments, concerns about anything you see right here on the screen? Okay. Let's look at the back. It's my y-intercept. Whoa. Whoa. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot of things to uh, graph here. It says identify the vertex, minimum, maximum, state which one and what it is, axis of symmetry, domain, range, blah, 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 blah. Everything we need to know about this graph is already given to us in the graph. Okay, first things first, I think this might be the easiest one to identify, but that's just me. Um, do I have a minimum or a maximum? Minimum. I have a maximum, okay, because it's at the top of the hill. So I know we're dealing with maximums. What is the coordinate of the vertex? Is one, is one, is one, is one, is one. X's come first, remember, X and then Y. So we have 5, 1, which means the axis, if this is my vertex, I'm going to zoom in here. If this is my axis, or I'm sorry, my vertex, what is my axis of symmetry? Um, five. Five. Yep, because it goes straight down that point. So axis of symmetry is x equals 5. 
In this particular graph, I don't think we have one because it doesn't look like it crosses anywhere, does it? So there probably isn't one. Okay. All right. Um, axis of symmetry, x equals 5. Domain. Negative infinity to positive infinity, also known as all real numbers. What's up, Cooper? Um, can we say all real numbers or can we abbreviate it ARN? Um, in pre-cal, I always used to do ARN, all real numbers, because it's spelled darn. Okay, so would you, so don't make me always just write this that right there is most likely how you're going to see it on your EOC. So that's why I'm giving it to you like that. Okay. Um, this is a maximum. So I know that in terms of the range, Y is what? <coughs> less than or equal to? Oh, less than or equal to one. To one. Huh? Flip your notes over. Right here. Oh, right there. Okay, yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, whoa, red line across the page. Cool. Um, is there a y-intercept for my graph? Nope. And where does it cross the x-axis? Where are my zeros, roots, x-intercepts, or solutions? Um, x equals 4, x equals 6. We could have written it 4, 0, 6, 0. Ladies and gentlemen, if I had given you the equation and I said, what are the solutions to the equation? Instead of factoring, you can plug it into y equals, graph it, and it'll tell you. Yeah, you're welcome. You couldn't have told us this last week? Sorry. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Here's our equation. What's the vertex? Bless you. Zero, negative four is what it looks like. So quick question from my table here in the middle. Um, Gavin, do I have a minimum or a maximum? Yeah. Which one do I have? <laughs> I have a minimum. There's your shout out. <laughs> I have a minimum. Where's it at? Zero, negative four. What's the axis of symmetry? X equals zero. Domain. The little gymnastics things. Gymnastics? Oh, 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 oh. These things. How is that gymnastics? It's more like ice skating. Sideways day. It's more like ice skating. I think so. I don't know. All right. Figure eights. There we go. Range. Because I have a minimum, y has to be greater than or equal to what? Um, negative 4. Negative 4. Where do I cross the y axis? Ne zero, negative 4. Zero, negative 4, which is interesting. And what are the zeros and roots? Negative two? So I'm going to zoom over this way so I can write a little better. Uh, so we have negative two, zero, and x equals positive two, zero. So we'll write them like that this time. Okay, questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to pause the video and I'll resume in a second. But what I want you to do is using a calculator, go to y equals, graph this one. You might have to zoom out a little bit. 
But I want you to try and answer these questions on your own. All right, this last question, number three, I want you to try it on your own, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I see. Um, negative one. Negative 16. Or, I'm sorry. That should be a positive one. Two, negative nine, three, negative four, four, negative one, five, zero, All right, so ladies and gentlemen, real quick, I had you guys graph it. Okay, you typed it in. Um, some people wrote their table down like this. Other people looked straight at the graph. And you were like, oh my gosh, I can't see it. And I told you to zoom in, zoom out, or play around with your window. Okay? Bless you, bless you, bless you. All right, your window, if you go to the window function of your calculator, you can actually change the dimensions of your screen on your graph, okay? So standard is from like negative 10 to positive 10. You could change that to negative 10,000 and your calculator would do it, okay? Um, don't do it, your graph will be really small. <laughs> um, so you can change all of those numbers to fit this graph in, however, um, I can answer these questions without using a graph, okay? So, real quick, let me see. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, my vertex, okay? Based off the table, I can find the vertex because the points on the y values on one side of the vertex are going to be the same as the y values on the other side of the vertex because it is symmetrical. Whatever happens to one side has to happen to the other. And the only place where that happens is right here. Five zero. Five zero. Because all of the y values repeat themselves on both sides. So I know that they're the same on both sides of that point, which means it has to be my vertex. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, um, she asked about what about 0, 025? Okay, 0, 025, when x equals 0, that's where my graph co crosses the x, at, or I'm sorry, the y-axis, okay? Which means that's my y-intercept. So 0, negative 25. Okay. Minimum or maximum, I have a maximum. And if I wasn't sure, I could look at what the graph actually says. So I know it's a maximum. And I know it's at the point 5, 0. Axis of symmetry goes straight through the vertex. X equals... Domain, all real numbers.